Alex here with a high conflict child custody video on claiming your children dependence. Um, probably will not be a short video, but it is important because it's 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 cropped up a few times and I really feel um, bad that people don't know about this, but if you're in a high conflict child custody case and your ex is claiming the kids every year, that's not right. Now, if you have joint physical custody of your kids, for sure that is not right. You should be alternating um, when the tax year is claimed, uh, when when uh, one parent can claim the children on a certain year versus another year. If you have a primary physical custody parent and the other parent paying child support, I think it is still not correct because I believe that when it comes to the IRS, they're looking to see who is supporting the children financially. So you probably still can get. Um, the remedy that this video is about to go into. I haven't gone into it yet. Um, so basically, it's called a Form 8332. It's an IRS form. It's This is for America. I don't know about other countries out there. You can have the court order parties to file Form 8332 with the IRS. And what this does, it's an awesome form. Once it's filed, the person who has filed the form cannot cha uh, claim the children on the years that they have put in on that form. And the court will order what years you're supposed to put on there. Um, so both parties will be ordered to file this form. And that basically gives you the peace of mind that your ex cannot claim the children on the years you're allowed to claim them. Some people have this issue. To be honest with you, if you have an ex who is claiming the children on taxes, on tax years that they have been ordered not to claim the children on, this person has probably got a personality disorder because that is contempt of court. Um, like I like I was saying, Form 8332 is amazing because it shouldn't even get to a contempt of court issue. Well, unless they won't file the form. So if the court orders them to file the form and they don't file the form, take them to court on contempt of court. Um, but once the form is filed, you should be fine after that. If they file, if they try to claim the kids, the IRS should just reject their uh, tax, uh, their whatever their tax submission. But I, I seriously, there are cases out there where people have gotten an order from the court to, uh, to you know, take turns on claiming the children, but the court didn't order anyone to file Form 8332. And I've seen cases where one of the parents is just like, well, screw the court, I'm going to file it every year. Um, th th it's insane. I don't know how somebody would do that and not be afraid of getting thrown in jail for contempt of court, but it happens. So anyone here who wants peace of mind, get the court to order the filing of Form 8332. I did it in my case, and it was amazing because I was able to claim the kids and I didn't have to worry and if I hadn't filed that form with the amount of times I had to take my ex to court on contempt of court I probably would have ended up taking her to court on contempt of court for some kind of tax nonsense as well so uh, <clears throat> you can ask for this um, before your trial or before you settle which is a great way to do it or if you forgot like I did I didn't remember I settled my case the, ju the final judgment was entered, and I had to use a post-judgment motion to get that to happen. You can still do it that way. That's how I did it. So a post-judgment motion, as I mentioned in my other videos, it's, it's just you filing a motion after your case has already been closed. It's a pretty regular thing in child custody cases, divorce cases. So um, anyway, that's just that's the way I had to do it. Once I filed that motion, can't remember if my ex opposed it. Actually, I don't think she did. Her attorney order, uh, got her to stipulate, and we were able to... Um, um, just basically go forward on, we got a court order that said we had to file that form and we both filed it and that was it, that was the end of it. So with that, I'm going to end this video. I am really curious for anyone here who knows the specifics as to the beginning parts of the video, um, whether or not joint physical custody is a 100%, um, both people get to split the, uh, the claim. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's true. I'm especially curious if anyone here was able to get alternating years when they do not have custody of the kids. They pay child support, they have visitation rights, they pay the child support. I'm interested to know if those parents have been able to get the court to order alternating uh, uh, years on uh, claiming the children as dependents. I'm pretty sure, but I'm I'm not. I'm like I'm 50/50 on it. Um, I know that the default position, the federal government has some kind of statute in the federal federal law that says that the person who gets to claim the children is the person who I believe cares for them primarily or something like that. I've seen some uh, parents bring that up to me and be like, well, according to the federal law, I can I can always claim them. Well, there's other provisions in that law that um, allows um, the IRS to defer to um, state determinations. 
Um, so like, a, you know, a state judge, a, a family judge can order, you know, parties to do a certain thing. And the federal government will, you know, will respect that. And uh, I mean, that's basically what we're talking about in this video is making sure that both parents have a fair right to claim uh, child dependence in their taxes. That not It's not just one parent hogging, you know, every single year they claim the dependence. It's not fair. So with that, I'll go ahead and end this video.